This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. Um, I thought just because I'm here to teach the Satipatthana that I should, I'm going to read you the very beginning of the sutra. Just, it's what we've been talking about already, but, and, and the whole sutra is long and, and it's very repetitive, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just the very beginning is nice. Um, it begins like a lot of the sutras do, because it's like things were being retold in an oral way. They weren't written down for a couple of hundred years. So the beginning is always, thus have I heard. And then they'll go into whatever it is that the person who's recounting it has heard. So, thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Buddha, the Blessed One, was living in the Kuru country at a town of the Kurus named Kamasadama. There he addressed the monks thus, monks, venerable sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this, monks, this is the direct path for the purification of beings, for the surmounting of sorrow and lamentation, for the disappearance of dukkha or suffering and discontent, for acquiring the true method, for the realization of nirvana, namely the four satipatthanas, the four domains of mindfulness. What are the four? Here, monks, in regard to the body, a monk abides contemplating the body, diligent, clearly knowing, and mindful, free from desires and discontent in regard to the world. That's one phrase. It's not free from desire, like people. Free from desires and discontent in regard to the world. In regard to feelings, he abides contemplating feelings, diligent, clearly knowing, and mindful free from desires and discontent in regard to the world. In regard to the mind, he abides contemplating the mind, diligent, clearly knowing and mindful, free from desires and discontent in regard to the world. In regard to dhammas, the mind objects, or the teachings of the Buddha, various ways of translating that word, he abides contemplating dhammas, diligent, clearly knowing, and mindful, free from desires and discontent in regard to the world. So you're putting all that, you put that aside, you know, your desires and discontent with regard to the world. Diligent, clearly knowing. Then it goes on. Breathing. And how, monks, does he, in regard to the body, abide contemplating the body? Here, gone to the forest, or to the root of a tree, or to an empty hut, he sits down, having folded his legs crosswise, sets his body erect, and established mindfulness in front of him. Mindful he breathes in, mindful he breathes out. Breathing in long, he knows, I breathe in long. Breathing out long, he knows, I breathe out long. Breathing in short, he knows, I breathe in short. Breathing out short, he knows, I breathe out short. He trains thus. I shall breathe in, experiencing the whole body. He trains thus. I shall breathe out, experiencing the whole body. He trains thus. I shall breathe in, calming the bodily formation. He trains thus. I shall breathe out, calming the bodily formation. Just as a skilled turner or his apprentice, like what's a turner but a woodworker kind of, just as a skilled turner or, or his apprentice, when making a long turn, knows I make a long turn, or when making a short turn, knows I make a short turn, so too, breathing in long, he knows I breathe in long, and then he repeats the whole thing. In this way, and then they repeat that refrain from above, in regard to the body, he abides contemplating the body internally, or he abides contemplating the body externally, or he abides contemplating the body both internally and externally. He abides contemplating the nature of arising in the body, or he abides contemplating the nature of passing away in the body, or he abides contemplating the nature of both arising and passing away in the body, 
Mindfulness that there is a body is established in him to the extent necessary for bare knowledge and continuous mindfulness. And he abides independent, not clinging to anything in the world. That is how, in regard to the body, he abides contemplating the body. And then it goes on and it, it repeats that last bit in, you know, in regard to the mind and the mind objects and so on. But the, the language, even in the, you know, in the English translation, is very beautiful. You know, all those little bits are you know, independent, uh, diligent. It's, I, at first, I would just read it quickly, and it's like, oh, OK, this is some arcane thing. But the, the language is actually really nice. Um, OK, any, any, last, any last words? Thank you so much. And I hope you comment here, Bob, Thank more. You, Thanks for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe to support the ongoing work of Tibet House US. Tashi Delek.